Hello, Manakkam. Welcome to the Electrical Engineering Examples channel. The focus of this channel is to provide detailed solutions for maximizing exam performance for students. In today's video, I will be showing you a step-by-step -step approach to solve for the different state variables of a power system using Gauss-Seidel approach. So please consider the three bus power system given below. In this diagram, the branch admittances in per unit are specified. So these are all branch admittances and all values specified here are in per unit. The objective of this problem is to determine the state variables of this power system using Gauss Seidel approach. Okay, so let us proceed to the solution. So the first step that we need to do in order to solve such a problem is to determine the state variables. So let us take a closer look at the power system. There are three buses in the power system. Bus one has a load connected to it. The value of the load power demanded is one plus J one in per unit. So the real power demanded is work one per unit and the reactive power demanded is one per unit. Since there is only a load connected to this bus, bus one can be thought of as a PQ bus. If it is a PQ bus, the state variables associated with this bus or in other words, the unknown states associated with this bus are basically the magnitude of voltage V and the angle of this voltage delta. So both these quantities are unknown. So at bus one, we need to determine V1 magnitude and the angle of the bus voltage, which is delta one. Let us look at bus two. At bus two, there is a generator connected and the value of its voltage and angle are specified in the problem statement. Therefore, bus two can be thought of as the slack bus or the reference bus. And because this is the reference bus, both the state variables, the voltage magnitude and the delta associated with this bus are known. And therefore, we don't have to solve for any state variables associated with bus two. The third bus also has a generator, but since bus two is already determined or referenced or considered as the reference bus, and since in a power system there can be only one reference or slack bus, bus three must be a generator bus, or in other words, it will be a PV bus. And because this is a PV bus, the value of real power supplied and the magnitude of the voltage at this bus are known, which leaves us with one state variable associated with the bus, which is the angle of the voltage at this bus delta three. So in essence, the whole problem boils down to solving for these three unknown quantities namely the magnitude of bus one voltage V1, angle of bus one voltage delta one, and the angle of bus three voltage delta three. Okay. And since the problem statement has explicitly specified to use Gauss Seidel approach, we will be following that approach. Now, irrespective of the approach, the next step that one needs to do after identifying the state variables is to form the Y bus matrix. Okay. So let us quickly solve for the bus admittance matrix. Because this is a three bus power system, the Y bus matrix is going to be a three cross three matrix. And since the branch admittances are already specified, per unit or the branch admittances are given instead of impedances, we can directly make use of them. Now, the self admittance at bus one is obtained by adding together all the branch admittances connected to bus one. 
and in this case it will be negative j20 because it is negative j10 which is the admittance between bus 1 and bus 2 and another negative j10 between bus 1 and bus 3 so if i sum all the branch admittances connected to bus 3 uh, bus 1 we get negative j20 okay so this is the self admittance of bus 1 it is obtained by adding together all the branch admittances connected to bus 1 now the transfer admittance between bus 1 and bus 2 is obtained by inverting the sign of the branch admittance and since the branch admittance between bus 1 and bus 2 is minus j10 the transfer admittance between bus 1 and bus 2 is going to be plus j10 and by applying the same rule the transfer admittance between bus 1 and bus 3 is also equal to plus j10 okay so likewise we can form the entire bus admittance matrix i'm going to quickly write it down and you can verify whether this makes sense or not and since a bus admittance matrix is a symmetric matrix it's symmetric about the diagonal so we can always fill the off diagonal elements by using the upper triangle so in this power system or for this power system for the value specified the self admittances are all equal to one another and they are found to be negative j20 in per unit and the off diagonal elements the transfer admittances are all found to be equal to one another and the values of them are specified as plus j10 okay so this is the bus admittance matrix this bus admittance matrix is expressed in cartesian form it will be helpful for us to represent the same bus admittance matrix by using a polar form of representation so let's do that quickly so in polar form i will have 20 at an angle of negative 90 degree i will have 10 at an angle of plus 90 degree i will have 10 at an angle of plus 90 degree okay where 20 is the magnitude of the admittance and negative 90 corresponds to the angle of the admittance likewise i can form all the rows and i'm going to represent that here so once again it is only the diagonal elements that will have a negative 90 degree angle off diagonal elements will all have positive 90 degree angle okay so this is the y bus represented in polar form the reason why this is important is when we represent the y bus in polar form we can get the magnitude of the branch admittances or the element uh, values as well as the corresponding angles and this information will be useful when we try to solve for state variables using gauss seidel approach okay so now that we have identified the state variables we have determined the y bus for the power system the next step is to go ahead and solve for the state variable by writing its corresponding equation so let us proceed the next step so this will be step 2 step 1 is to determine the state variables step 3 uh, step 1 is to determine the state variables step 2 is to form the y bus and represent it in both cartesian and polar form and step 3 is going to be solving for a state variable and since we will go with a bus 1 always in this case the bus 1 has two unknown quantities namely the magnitude of voltage v1 and the angle of the voltage delta 1 and because we are going to use gauss seidel approach in this approach the voltage is expressed in cartesian form and therefore the magnitude and angle are expressed in terms of real and imaginary terms rather than in polar form and therefore the equation to solve for 
the voltage at bus 1 which is a complex number so this is a complex number v1 is going to be given by this expression 1 over y11 once again this is a complex number multiplied with v1 scheduled minus jq1 scheduled divided by v1 conjugate minus y12 v2 minus y13 v3. Since this is a three bus power system, if it were a four bus power system, we will have minus y14 v4 and so on. Okay. Now, please note that in this expression, all quantities are expressed in Cartesian form. Therefore, v1 is having real and imaginary term, y11 will be having a real and imaginary part, y12 will have real and imaginary part, v2 will have real and imaginary part, same for v y13 and v. Now, in order to solve for v1, it is evident that we need to know the initial value of v1 itself, because this expression, the unknown quantity v1 is dependent on itself, which is v1 conjugate. So we will have to assume an initial value for V1. And we will have to assume initial values for all unknown quantities. Okay. So what we will do is step four is basically we will make assumptions. Assuming initial values. Let's assume initial values for all unknown quantities. And calculate the rest okay y11 is known to us so i'm going to write that y11 is because we are writing it in cartesian format this will be negative j20 p1 scheduled is p1 generated minus p1 demanded since at the bus one, there is only a load and the power demanded is given as one per unit, P1 scheduled is going to be zero minus one, which is minus one per unit. Similarly, Q1 scheduled using the same logic, it's going to be Q1 generated minus Q1 demanded. And that is going to be 0 minus 1, which is minus 1 in per unit. B1 on the right hand side is something that we do not know. So we need to assume an initial value. Let V1 initial value V1 of 0 be equal to 1 plus j0, which is also equal to 1 at an angle of 0 degrees. Okay. So I'm assuming that the initial value of this bus voltage V1 is 1 in magnitude and an angle 0 degrees, or in other words, it's 1 plus j0 in per unit. So this is an assumption I'm making. It is only with this assumption we can solve for the state variable. And just to distinguish between the initial value and the value that is solved, I'm going to call the value that is solved for the first time as V1 of 1. Okay. And I'm going to write it here as V1 of 0 conjugate. Now, how about y12? y12 is specified in y bus and it is known to us. It is plus j10. So there is no problem with that. How about v2? v2 is given. It is the complex voltage associated with the slack bus. And that is going to be 1 plus j0 in per unit. y13 is also found to be j10. 10 
and finally v v3 now interestingly v3's magnitude is known but the angle is something that we do not know and therefore we need to assume an angle for simplicity sake we are going to assume the angle of v3 or the initial angle of v3 to be zero therefore let us say let v3 initial value v3 of 0 be equal to 1 plus j 0 once again or in other words is the magnitude that specified as 1 per unit and the angle is assumed to be 0 degree in per unit okay so now in order to solve for the bus one voltage we know everything in this expression and wherever we did not know originally we have assumed an initial value okay so for v1 we assume both the magnitude and the angle we assume both these terms for v3 we assume only the angle because the magnitude is specified in the top once we have made these assumptions we have to substitute them into the expression that's given above and we have to solve for v1 of 1 or in other words we have to solve for v1 for the first time okay so let us do that v1 of 1 is going to be equal to 1 over negative j 20 times p1 scheduled is minus 1 minus of minus j1 is going to be plus j1 divided by v1 of 0 is assumed to be 1 plus j0 and its conjugate is going to be 1 minus j0 it doesn't really matter so it's going to be 1 minus j0 it's just 1 at the end of the day minus y12 is j10 multiplied with v2 which is 1 plus j0 minus y13 is j10 once again which is multiplied with v3's initial value please note the magnitude of v3 is known it is only the angle that is unknown v3's initial value is 1 plus j0 once again because we are assuming the angle of the v3 voltage is 0 degree okay and this is the step after substitution so when we solve this we should get v1 of 1 i will let you do this complex math i have done it and i found the value of v1 of 1 to be equal to 0.95 minus j 0 0.05 in per unit you please check if you are getting this value i might have made some mistake so i want you to double check this value and it is always useful whenever we are solving for this state variables it is always useful to represent them using a polar form so if i rewrite this equation or the value of v1 in polar form i get the magnitude of v1 when i at the end of the first iteration is 0.9513 per unit and the angle is approximately minus three degrees it's not precisely minus three it's an approximate value okay so that's something you can uh, make use of the exact value i'm just make using make using the approximate value so this is the value of bus one voltage at the end of first iteration okay so it's good we have solved for v1 magnitude we have solved for delta one magnitude we now have to solve for delta three which is a part of bus three voltage so the next step that we need to do is write the equation for v3 so v3 at the end of first iteration is going to be 1 over y33 p3 scheduled minus jq3 scheduled over v3's initial value its conjugate minus y31 v1 and now we will be using the value of v1 that we have just obtained recently and this is very important we don't have to go back to the initially assumed value of v1 instead we will substitute the value we just arrived at 
in the next expression. Then minus y three two. Okay. So once again in this expression we know b y three three, we know y three one, we know y three two. V one of one is something just obtained. It has to be expressed in Cartesian form. V two is something known because the slack bust value, magnitude, and angles are given. So you can write that explicitly. So what we need to look for is we need to know whether we know P three scheduled or and Q three scheduled. So P three scheduled. Is P three generated minus P three demanded, and since bus three is a PV bus, P three generation is given as one per unit, and since there is no load connected to the bus, the P three demanded power is going to be zero per unit. It implies P three scheduled is one per unit. Now, how about Q three scheduled? Unfortunately, because the bus is a PV bus. the reactive power generated value is not known therefore we need to solve for q3 scheduled is something that is unknown okay so q3 scheduled is something that one needs to solve for so how can we solve for q3 scheduled so at any bus the reactive power value can be solved for by making use of the load flow equation so the load flow equation states the reactive power value at any bus can be obtained by using minus summation okay at bus 3 it will be summation y3k pk v3 sin so let me write it down let's say k is the variable k is equal to 1 to n where n is the total number of buses in a power system y3k V k, V three, sine theta three k plus delta k minus delta three. So this is the equation that we will use to solve for the reactive power at bus three, and in this expression we will have to make use of appropriate values of voltages and. impedance or admittance angles theta and load angles deltas to get for uh, to get the reactive power value q so for the system under consideration q3 scheduled is given as minus y31 v1 of 1 v3 of 0 sin Theta three one. This is the admittance angle that can be obtained from the bus admittance matrix. Plus delta one of one minus delta three of zero. So this is the first term minus y three two v two v three of zero. Sine theta three two plus delta two minus delta three of zero minus y three three v three of zero that is multiplied two times sine theta three three plus delta three of zero minus delta three of zero is two. So these two will get cancelled out. So we will get just sine theta three three. Okay. So this is the expression that we need to use, and we have to substitute the appropriate values of v one, v three, delta one, delta three like that, and obtain Q three scheduled. Okay. So Q three scheduled. So if I substitute the values minus magnitude of y three one, and because we are using the magnitude of the admittance, that is why. it is important to represent the y bus value in polar form or the y bus matrix in polar form so just the magnitude of y31 element 
it's going to be 10. The magnitude of V1 of 1, and because we had represented that using uh, in polar form as well, it is 0 0.9513. V3 is initial magnitude, or the magnitude is always known. It is one per unit, it's given, it's a PV bus times sine theta 3 1 is 90 degree plus delta 1 of 1 is approximately negative 3 degree. So that's the negative 3. Okay. And then I have delta 3 of 0, which is 0 degrees, minus y32 magnitude is also 10, v2 magnitude is 1, v3 of 0 magnitude is 1, sine theta 32 is 90 degree, plus delta 2 is 0, minus delta 3 of 0 is 0, minus y33 magnitude is 20, which is multiplied with v3 magnitude, which is 1, which is 1 sine theta 33 is minus 90 degrees. Need to refer back to the bus admittance matrix to get the theta 33 value. Okay. So when you simplify this, you get q3 scheduled is 0 0.5 in per unit. I hope you will do the math and you can validate my numbers here. So this is Q3 schedule. Okay, so we have solved for Q3 schedule. The reason why we need to solve for Q3 schedule was we had to use this value of Q3 schedule to substitute into this expression of V3 and we have to solve for bus three voltage. That's the reason why we needed Q3. So we have solved for that. So now we can proceed and we can, so V3 of one is one over Y33. Now this is complex number. So this is minus J20 times P3 scheduled, which is one per unit minus JQ3 scheduled, which is what we just estimated, that is 0 0.5 per unit divided by V3 of 0, which is the initial value of bus 3 voltage as a complex number, it's conjugate, V3 of 0 is conjugate has to be used in the denominator. And since we have assumed the initial angle to be 0 degrees, so we will have this conjugate value to be 1 minus J0 okay, minus Y31 V1 and we need to use V1 of 1. So that is going to be Y31 is J10 multiplied with V1 as a complex number that we found at the end of first iteration is 0.95 minus J0.05 per unit, okay, minus minus y32 v2, y32 is j10 and v2 is 1 plus j0 because this is the slack bus voltage. Okay. So we have everything that we need to solve for v3 of 1 and when we simplify this, we get v3 of 1's value to be 1 plus j 0. 0.025 in per unit. This when represented in polar form is magnitude is found to be slightly greater than 1, 1 1.0003 at an angle of 1.432 degrees in per unit. Now because bus 3 is a PV bus, its magnitude 
or the voltage magnitude cannot be different than what is specified. Therefore, what we will do is V3 of one is we will discard this magnitude and we will make it as one per unit. Why? Because this is what is specified in the problem as specified in the problem. And I'm going to just retain the angle. Okay, so this is one approach we can follow. So this is one at an angle of 1.432 degrees per unit. Okay. So now we know the value of delta three. So now our initial objective was to solve for the state variables V1 magnitude, delta one, which is the angle of V1, and then delta three, which is the angle of V3. So at the end of first iteration, we have V1 magnitude to be 0.9513, delta one, so this is V1 of one, delta one of one is approximately minus three degrees, and delta three of one is approximately 1.432 degrees in per unit. So this is, this is in degrees. 1.432 degrees. It's only the magnitude is in per unit. Okay. So let me just write that. Okay. So we have V1 magnitude, we have delta 1 magnitude, delta 3 magnitude. So this is what the problem statement asked us to determine. What, should, what is the value of the state variables of the power system if we solve the power system using gauss seidel approach we have done that now this is at the, just after one iteration if we have to repeat the process so many times in exams you will be asked to determine the state variables for up to two iterations so how do we do that so let us take uh, one step ahead and let us try to solve for the same quantities but at the end of second iteration so the way we will do it is we will use the same set of equations, except that we will be substituting these values into the equations and then we will be solving for, okay? So for iteration two, so V1 as a complex number, when it is determined for the second time, it's going to be one over y11 as a complex number multiplied with p1 scheduled minus jq1 scheduled. Now these values will not change because bus one is a pq bus divided by v1 of one conjugate minus y12 v2 and since this is a slack bus voltage, it will also not change minus Y13 V3 of one. Okay. Now, please note that V3 of one is a value that we have just found here. We have to convert this back into Cartesian coordinates or in rectangular form and then use it in the next set of equations. So we will have to substitute, this is minus J20, P1 scheduled is minus one, minus JQ1 scheduled is also minus one, therefore J plus J1 divided by V1 of one conjugate is going to be point nine five plus J 0 0.05, please note the plus sign is because it's a conjugate value minus Y12, Y12 is J10, that has not changed. V2 is not going to change, it's one plus J0 because this is a reference bus value minus Y13 will not change J10. V3's initial value and please note, because we have discarded the actual magnitude and we have retained the magnitude specified in the problem and the angle alone is used. So we need to convert V3 of one back into rectangular coordinates and we find that to be 0.9999. It's very close to one. 
प्लस जे जीरो पॉइंट जीरो टू अप्रोक्सीमेटेड टू फाइव ओके एक्चुअली फोर नाइन सेवन इफ आई एम नॉट रॉन्ग जीरो पॉइंट जीरो टू फोर नाइन सेवन इस शुड बी द वैल्यू बट आई हैव अप्रोक्सीमेटेड इट हियर दिस इज द एक्सप्रेशन एंड इफ आई सिंपलीफाई इट आई गेट वी वन ऑफ टू अप्रोक्सीमेटली इक्वल टू पॉइंट नाइन फोर फोर टू फाइव नेगेटिव जे पॉइंट जीरो थ्री सेवन टू थ्री and if i convert this into its polar coordinates i get the magnitude to be equal to 0.945 at an angle equal to negative 2.26 degrees okay so this is the value of bus 1 voltage at the end of second iteration so now we need to proceed we have to solve for v3 of 2 v3 of 2 in order to solve that we have to first solve for q3 of 2 so let's rewrite that so to solve for v3 of 2 q3 scheduled of 2 must be evaluated so what is q3 scheduled of 2 it is minus y31 v1 of 2 v3 of 1 sin theta 31 plus delta 1 of 2 minus delta 3 of 1 minus Y three two, V two, V three of one, sine theta three two plus delta two minus delta three of one minus Y three three magnitude V three of one, V three of one magnitude sine theta three three only because Delta three of one minus delta three of one will cancel out each other. Okay, so this is the expression that we need to use to solve for the reactive power scheduled at bus three for the second iteration. Okay, and when we substitute the values, we get minus the magnitude of y three one is ten, v one. Two is just the value that we just obtained. Its magnitude, it's point nine four five in per unit, and V three of one. Because V three is a PV bus, the magnitude of the voltage is always going to be remained, or it's always going to get fixed at the specified value of one per unit. Sine theta three one is ninety degree. Delta one. at the end of second iteration is minus 2.26 degrees so it, and then delta 3 at the end of first iteration is plus 1.432 degrees okay minus 10 multiplied with v2 is 1 v3 is 1 sin theta 32 is 90 minus delta 2 is 0 Minus delta three is one point four three two. Minus y three three, so it's twenty magnitude. V three of one is one. Sine theta three three is minus ninety. And when we simplify that, we get Q three scheduled for the second iteration to be equal to point. Five seven three in per unit. Okay. So we have substituted the values that we obtained in the previous iteration, and we have calculating the scheduled reactive power at bus three for the second iteration. Once we have that, we will now 
write the expression for the bus three voltage at second iteration, and that will be one over y three three times p three scheduled minus j q three scheduled that is obtained for the second iteration over v three of one's conjugate. So what is v three of one? It is one at an angle of one point four three two degrees. And its conjugate has to be used minus y three one v one of two and minus y three two v two. So this is the expression. We need to substitute all of in complex coordinates. P three scheduled is one per unit. Minus J Q three scheduled is something that we just calculated. Point five seven three V three of one, then which is represented its conjugate value. It's going to be point nine 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 minus J zero point zero two five. Then we have Y three one, which is J ten times V one of two is something that we just solved for. Point nine four four three with an imaginary term minus j point zero three seven two three and then minus y three two is also j ten times v two is one plus j zero. So if we sum simplify this, we get v three of two to be equal to. One at an angle of one point eight four degrees interim, and this is after uh, ignoring the original magnitude. We just take care of the magnitude and the angle. So the magnitude is fixed at bus three, and the angle is something that we have obtained by solving these values listed up. Okay. So this is how we will arrive at bus. Three voltage. So now, at the end of second iteration, we have V three of oh, sorry V one of two is point nine four five the magnitude in per unit. Delta two is minus two point two six degrees, and delta three is one point eight four degrees. If you recollect. The magnitude of the voltage at the end of first iteration was 0.9513 per unit. Delta one was minus. Actually, this is delta one, not delta two. Delta one was minus three degrees, and delta three was 1.432 degrees. Okay. So what we have realized is, after when we did the second iteration, the values have changed. And the change is significant. We cannot ignore these changes. Okay. Usually, when we are solving these problems in per unit, we should go up to three decimal. At least three decimals have to match to consider two values to be uh, identical or two two values to be close enough. Okay. In this case, there is a significant difference. So we need to proceed further and further to get up to a point where. When we look at any two consecutive iterations results, the change in the values between uh, the magnitude of bus one voltages or between the angles of bus one voltages or the angles of bus three voltages, none of the variables. See, all these three state variables should have no change between two consecutive iterations. And when we reach that point, that is when we say. That the state variables solutions have converged, and we should stop proceeding further. Okay, so evident it's evident that at the end of second iteration the solution has not converged. We should continue with this calculation. I did a I did write a code in MATLAB, and when I iterated this set of equations, 
up to eight times. If I'm not wrong, when I do iterations for eight times, I did see that all the three state variables converge and their final values were found. Okay? So I leave that as an exercise to you all to do that. So please uh, practice and please keep this in mind when you are solving for the state variables using Gauss Seidel approach. It's important that you determine the state variables first by identifying the different types of buses given in the power system, then form the Y bus matrix. Many a times the branch admittances will not be specified, only the branch impedances will be specified. In that case, you need to first synthesize the branch admittances and then form the Y bus matrix. Once you have the Y bus matrix, you can write the equations for the state variables in rectangular form. And if needed, you will solve for the reactive power at a bus. And then you will use those values and substitute and solve for the state variables. Okay? So this is the whole idea of solving for a power system using, uh, solving for the state variables of a power system using gauss seidel approach. I hope this video has helped you in learning this procedure. If you have any questions, please uh, leave them as a comment. Thank you so much.